Hey Pittsburgh, Josh Miller here. Welcome to another exciting episode of A Day in a Life. Today we're doing something totally different. We're hanging out at the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater and I'm going to show you these might be the best athletes in town. Stay tuned for another episode of A Day in a Life. I'm joined right now with Terrence Orr, uh, artistic director uh, at the at the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater, PBT. Right. Uh, I have a million questions because my daughter's getting into this, and I want to know as a director: uh, Is this a crazy thing? Is it not? Do I guide her away and say, "Don't do this"? What is she in for? Getting into the ballet world, I'm seeing a glimpse of it because I'm, I'm an athlete myself, and right. I have a son. I know what the hockey mom looks like. They're crazy. <laughs> are ballet parents crazy? We're all crazy. We are a certain degree. You know, it's an incredible life, life form, mm -hmm. um, and a job is amazing because to be in the arts is phenomenal. It's not easy for all, all kinds of reasons because you as a dancer, you're physical, you're an artist, um, you act, um, you start your day at 9 o'clock in the morning and you finish at 6 on a regular rehearsal day. On performance days, we finish at 11, 11.30 at night. Um, and you know, we, we do a lot of preparation. We have classes in the morning when we first get started. We do six hours of rehearsal. And um, we do about six different productions through the year. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to attain yourself, to be able to be a dancer, you probably start at a very young age. Um, some people start at three years old, four years old. Um, do you recommend people, that? Do you recommend um, getting yes, into all different dances? You know, it, it depends, because you're not going to take hardcore ballet, ballet. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn rhythms. You're going to be learning all kinds of things about your body mm -hmm. um, and about, you, you see the aptitudes of a dancer. You can tell whether they have any kind of musicality or coordination mm -hmm. um, and whether they have an aptitude to want to do it. Um, it does take a dedication more and more as you get into it. At first it's not, you know, it might be once a week and uh, then you get in two times a week. Pretty soon you're doing five times a week and you're doing four hours a day. Um, and then you're going even, even more. You're getting, it's a re regular lifetime job where you're doing 40 hours a day, uh, 40 hours a week. And uh, that would be a trick, 40 hours a day. We could really get uh, a lot done. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no doubt. Let me ask you this question. You put on the TV and everybody watches reality shows now and now there's shows that really hit every single field. And you see right. these dance moms and you see mm -hmm. what they're making that look like as opposed mm -hmm. to what it is. Are you a fan or are you not a fan for them showing that? Are you happy that they're getting it out there so kids have a vehicle? Or are you well, mad on how it's being portrayed? I, I, not saying I, it's in a bad way, I, I'm I, saying however you perceive I, it. I, I just, I don't believe in the way that they perceive it. Mm -hmm. They sense, you know, that it's, it's too um, over the top and it's not real. Um, the way the real life is. Yes, it is hard. You know, put in life, life hours, but um, it's not as as backbiting as some people would mm. like to make it, um, or as dramatic a trauma going on as people would like to make it. We're pretty ordinary individuals. I mean, you can kind of see that just being around. Right, the and time it's a back. family atmosphere, That's and I, I see a lot of support so. for one another. Very, very but it doesn't so. seem very. Uh, yeah. I don't want to use the no. word catty, but it does seem. No. I know where I'm at on the totem pole, right. and until I earn something. Then, then I'm going to just fall in line. You're right. Well, perhaps to a certain degree, but I, you know, you see, principal dancers taking care of quarter ballet dancers, and there's no like I am this and you there's are no that. There's no selfishness. No, it's just you're just doing something that you like to do, and you're helping other people be able to do it too. Now, as an artistic director, what is that entitled? What are your what's your hat? I know you wear many well, hats. It's really the buck stops here, you know, in a way. You, you know, I used to be able to go and ask other people questions and get the answers. Now I find everybody comes to me all day long, and, and it's about answering questions so that we can do our product. Mm -hmm. And our product essentially is getting on the stage and doing performances. And so um, that's the that's the end. But getting there is lights, it's music, it's rehearsals, it's costumes, it's getting prepared for a whole performance. And it's you know when you think about the ten years it takes to even learn to dance to get there. No, it's funny because I, I look at 
and I, I always interview athletes and teams and, and presidents and GMs and the players, but I can't help but to think you're, my, you're the GM. Mm -hmm. um, the buck stops with you, like you mm -hmm. said, and, and your reflection of what goes on that stage. Um, with that being said, do you find a lot of similarities with the athletes? Do you have that young hot shot that you got to yeah. pull aside? Hey, relax, your time will come. <laughs> uh, do you have that guy who's over the top? I don't need to do this one because I got it. No, no, you right. do it because you're setting an example for the guys behind right. you. Do you have to That's wear right. all those hats as well? That's right. That's right. You definitely have to be. You you want to keep people inspired. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give them. You want to give them something to do that they have to attain more than they've accomplished so far, um, and it gives them a way to grow. And then there's there's others others that. Um, are just you know waiting, biting at the bit to be able to do something they're really very capable of, and you may not have the product for them to go on yeah. the stage and do right away. But you you make sure that it tries to to happen as soon as it can. What about the other role? Like yeah, the GM <laughs> role. I remember when I fir first signed my contract, unbelievable. The awakening was congratulations. Now I'm going to go try to replace you. <laughs> so I mean, as a dancer, are are they under that same gun, or do they think they are? I think, um, I, know, I can't answer for all of them, but mm -hmm. I know that myself as a dancer, um, you always know that there's people around you that could do your, your part or your job. Um, I think that goes for anybody in mm -hmm. walk of life. But it, it shows up probably more um, as an artist uh, in an organization where you're seeing a performing value going on when all of a sudden this person is much better because they're very funny in that mm -hmm. role and it's supposed to be a funny role and this one isn't mm -hmm. so they have to do a different kind of role so it, it always plays different we have 30 dancers and um, it's extremely varied group of dancers I don't want them all to look exactly alike or mm -hmm. act exactly alike because there's different kind of roles to be able to well, one size doesn't fit all that's right of the situation the personalities right. are different you know how to handle everybody differently I'm sure right. you have your own jokes your own stories and mm -hmm. um, you have to pretend that each one's your favorite not that you're pretending but that's no, you yeah. want them to think that I'm well, there for you I'm I'm more I don't I don't do it I don't even think about it that way they are my life right they really are um, I, I come here because I love what I'm doing and um, I want them to feel the same way, and I don't have to force it on them. It just becomes that. You know, it's funny because as a goal of, of whether it's a coach, whether it's a GM, whether it's that player, you want to leave a place better than you found it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you're on that path. What, what's the, where is the, the Pittsburgh Valley Theater from when you found it? Um, I think we've grown a lot, you know, um, and artistically we've been able to put on ballets that we've never done before, mm -hmm. the likes of uh, John Normeyer and and uh, I could name a lot of choreographers, which most people wouldn't maybe know, uh, but certainly George Balanchine you've heard of, and Jerome Robbins, and Yuri Killian. So is that how you measure yourself? Will people look at you yeah. and say, okay, that's the feather the, and the cap, sure. To be able to do the great works, mm -hmm. right? And to be able to bring them to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. if they haven't seen them before. That's awesome. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy, Thank man. You very All much. the best to you. Thank you so much. Terrific. Thank All the you. best to you. You're watching A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. We'll be right back. A Day in the Life with Josh Miller is brought to you by UPMC, life changing medicine, SE Tire and Wheel Center, located at 5200 Route 51 South in Bell Vernon, and Total Sports Enterprises, always a home game, located at the mall at Robinson. We'll be right back. Wrecking's part of our sport. Crashing and hitting things is just going to happen to you. The first time that I got injured, I tried to hide it. I tried to push through. Four weeks later, I'd been injured again, back to back. The best decision I made was to go to UPMC. We went through all these activities that had results that made sense, and things got better. Holy cow, man, we just won the 500. I didn't choose to be in a 25-car pileup but I did choose UPMC. Welcome back to A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. Welcome back to A Day in the Life. I am fortunate to be hanging out with Dr. Vonda Wright again. I'm How so, are you? I'm happy to see you. Well, I'm happy to see you as well. And it's so funny because I am hanging out at, at uh, Pittsburgh Valley Theater. Yeah. And when I see you and you look at your resume and you have the teams that you're with and the teams right. that you keep an eye on, mm -hmm. 
This is one you have, you raise your eyebrow a little bit like the theater. Really? Do they need somebody? Right. And are they really athletes? Well, we're finding out big time that they are. Yeah. The, similarities yeah. are the similarities are unbelievable. Right. Um, tell me why they need a team doctor. People will be amazed at the injuries, the similarities. Exactly. So, you know, ballet, when you see it on stage, is so graceful mm -hmm. and effortless. Effortless. Right. Like, how? In, it just doesn't seem like they're even sweating. But the truth is, with all the teams that we take care of at, at sports medicine, these are some of the best athletes I have ever taken care of. Because if you really notice what they're doing, their vertical leap is 48 inches. They're up to the top of my head right. when they're leaping. And sometimes they're walking around, the men are walking around on stage holding a girl up like this, having like a conversation. Nothing. Like it was eating a Tootsie Roll. I mean, it was right. nothing. But so the, the physical strength mm -hmm. and then the endurance. So, you know, in a typical game, whatever the situation, mm -hmm. you. If we're playing football, we're in and out, in, uh, in downs. Mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're playing hockey, we're in shifts. But these people are full on for 5, 10, 15 minutes at a time, leaving nothing on the stage. And so they get lots of overuse injuries and, and, uh, and even traumatic injuries, just like any sports team that I've ever taken care of. You know, it's funny because you look at the similarities. They're, they're striving to be perfect. Exactly. The, the show must go on. Mm -hmm. There's no next man up here. This I, is all uh, live. Uh, you're live. You're always mm -hmm. performing in front of a crowd. Right. And if you're not on, you're in trouble. And okay. they're always looking to get younger. And you're, you could always get replaced. I mean, the similarities to me are unbelievable. When you look at the ballet world and you look at mm -hmm. just any sport. And there's a, in the moment when they're performing, there is no substitution. I mean, right. those decisions are made ahead out. of time, right? There's right. no time out. Let's pull the guy out, put the next, mm -hmm. the backup guy in. So they have to be on all the time. And, uh, and so they train year round, just like all the athletes that, you know, you've ever met do. They, they start this in practically their infancy. The girls start around five. The boys typically start mm -hmm. a little older, but, uh, and then they devote their countless life. hours, their lives. It becomes their sport, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, as children are coming up, they start two days a week, and then the next year they're three days a week, and before you know it, your kids at the ballet every day, and it seems overwhelming, but that's exactly what we do in every other sport. Well, it is, and, I, and, and the pressure that these kids put on themselves, and I have mm -hmm. to assume it's the same way in the theater. You're always kind of looking over your shoulder, you right. kind of, who's this new kid, who's now I've got to prove myself again. Yeah. I mean, so, so for you personally, mm -hmm. you've developed friendships with that. I've noticed mm -hmm. when you walked in, everyone came and said hello to you. Yeah. Um, from an emotional and a mental standpoint, just as, as, as taxing, I'm sure, as any sport. Mm -hmm. Well, I admire these people so mm -hmm. much. Yes, I have become friends with them over the years. Um, I've been taking care of them for the better part of 10 years. Dr. Fu started mm -hmm. this relationship here about 30 years ago. But in the years I've been here, we've become friends. But I, I really admire these people. And, Everybody prepares differently, probably like people do like on the sidelines. Like any locker room, sure. So some of them are backstage marking their steps. They're mm -hmm. visualizing what they're going to do. Some of them, I've heard, they're just like, okay, I'm leaving nothing on the stage. Here we go. Let's just do this. Those My are like foot Ben hurts. Roethlisberger's of the world, the, the right. Crosby's, cool as a cucumber. Do, right. uh, do, do you think go. they have, do they have the throw up guy? <laughs> Every locker room has that throw up guy. It has to pace back and forth, throw up, go on stage, hit it out of ballpark. You know, I've been the backstage field. a lot and I've never met the throw up guy, thankfully. Yeah. I'm going to find the throw up guy here. Every, every team, and I call this a team, clearly it's a it family. It is a team, absolutely. Uh, so, so, how is the Pittsburgh Valley Theater doing? I mean, let's, let's, yeah. you said Freddie Fu obviously just came in here 30 years ago and said, okay, yeah. I need to be here. You know um, what we do for them? Uh, we, uh, injury wise, mm -hmm. I don't want it. I don't want people to believe that they're injured all the time. Actually, we have a team of people that take care of them, mm -hmm. physical therapists, athletic right. trainers, nutritionists, and we pre-screen them every season. And we say, you're at risk for this, let's help you train that out of you. And then someone is here every day in the training room, and then one of, us, one of our uh, physician staff is at every performance. And so they're doing great in terms of being really looked after. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a company, I am really excited where they're going. This year we had the most amazing ballet called Elevated, which everyone I talked to in the community just thought it was amazing feat of nature that the, the, the dancing that went on, the interpretation of the music, we just uh, finished the, what everybody loves, the Nutcracker. Of you know, course. lots of the community of was in it. Uh, the next ballet coming up is all about the men. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a pirate 
La, La Cozier. Okay. It's, it's all about pirates and swashbuckling mm -hmm. and jumping high and, you know, stealing treasure. So we're really Excellent. excited about it. Now, let me ask you this question again. I'm just intrigued with all the similarities. Is it, um, it's a full-time job it all is. year round. I mean, you're talking it. nutrition, working out. Yeah. You don't just get done with the season, then you move on. You know, no. you, you, is it an audition again? Do you have to try out again? Are there contracts? I'm intrigued with the overlap. Right. So the there's a structure, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you have the professional company. We have uh, uh, of the top dancers. And then we have a core of the dancers rising. Mm -hmm. And then we have a school where we're from the very youngest to people getting uh, ready to go to college. And, you know, just like any theater development system, ballet has the same thing. For the professional dancers, this is their year-round job. Once our season ends um, in May or so, they have a couple months off in the summer, just like the, pro the right. other pro athletes sure. do. And many of them have the most interesting lives. One of our dancers is a sailor. She goes to Lake Erie and is on a professional sailing team. Wow. They race all summer. Uh, another couple, I think you're going to interview them today, are very outdoorsy people. Mm -hmm. One of our dancers, uh, Yosh, uh, who just choreographed a piece, is actually from Russia. He goes home every summer. Wow. But when they know when re to report back, and they are expected to report in shape. Yeah, just like another course. team. You've heard that before, right? I'm sure of it. I'm sure like any other team, there's, there's I want you back at this weight. I want mm -hmm. you back at this strength. Right. And, well, that's unreal. Off-season yeah. surgeries, off-season stuff of that nature You just get everything well. taken care of. You rest your body and your mind, and then you hit the ground. Unreal. Ballet and sports. If you don't think they have anything in common, you're crazy. Dr. Von der Wright, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming here. Thank you. Alexandra, Christopher, not only are they principals, not only are they front and center principals, and not only are they fans of mine. I, I go to a couple shows my wife drags me to it, and I have an enormous respect. But you're also married, mm -hmm. which is, I have to assume, uh, is that a tough thing to do from time to time? Because when the lights are on, you got to be on. And I know my relationship with my wife is wonderful, but I like missing them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I like being calling, texting home, hey, I miss you, honey, but you guys work together, hang out together, and I assume live together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. How was that relationship like? Um, I mean, we've been doing it for such a long time that I really can't imagine it another way, actually. Um, and it is such a hard business, and it takes so much of your life, and your whole life is sort of devoted to it. To have someone that understands that is really helpful and who supports you in that and is out there, you know, giving you energy actively. And I mean, I find it actually, I'm really lucky. I, th I think it's been phenomenal since we've been here. Uh, I feel, uh, I mean, artistically as well as uh, technically within the company. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it's, it, it feels good to be a part of that as well. I mean, you, a growing you, organization like that. And yeah. you feel like, a, a, you know, just a, just a little bit of that growth is, is something that you put into it. And uh, I mean, that's really rewarding. I think, uh, I mean, as well as that, there's also uh, expansion within the building and they're adding on more studios. Uh, so, you know, there's that side of it too, the, the, the circular process of, of uh, the organization growing. Uh, and reaching out to the community because we're going to have more opportunities for more kids to come and take classes and adults to take classes and um, that just you know fuels excitement towards what we do. Okay so I got to ask this question this is what brought me here today. I'm an ex-football player uh, and I was a kicker but I still I'm still allowed to call myself a football player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I catch but a lot of grief but at the same time all the guys that made fun of me are the ones that say, teach my kid how to play. <laughs> yeah. so, with that being said, the similarities in the discipline between being in the ballet, being in dance, being in the arts, I guess, mm -hmm. but since you're here with you, the principals, I want to talk to you about the overlapping similarities. Even as a small child, the odds of an athlete and to become a principal, you don't even want to look at the numbers mm -hmm. because they're staggering. What kind of assimilations, what kind of uh, comparisons, rather, a better word for it, that you see between the athlete today, a professional athlete, and the professional dancer? I mean, a, a ton of them. I mean, obviously, uh, you, you, you generally start off very young, you know, uh, being trained and, and uh, you know, you feel like, is this just a fun thing or is this, you know, when does it become serious is another uh, change. Also, you know, from where you start and the years roll on and then uh, all of a sudden, okay, now these people in the class are moving up mm -hmm. and now these people are moving out up and now these people aren't even there anymore and now 
and, and the other side of, of as you, you uh, improve and become the big fish, you know, then they throw you in another pond and, and you're not the big fish anymore and, right. and you need to start, uh, uh, you know, working through that and learning uh, and improving and uh, that, that just keeps happening, you know, and by the fifth time that, you know, eventually you end up in the ocean and you're like, whoa, you know, that's... You're watching A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. We'll be right back. A Day in the Life with Josh Miller is brought to you by UPMC. Life-Changing Medicine, SE Tire and Wheel Center, located at 5200 Route 51 South in Bell Vernon, and Total Sports Enterprises, always a home game, located at the Mall at Robinson. We'll be right back. Colin Woodlands, a luxury getaway with a welcome twist. To make your reservation, visit nemacolon.com and expect the unexpected. You got to be a little off anyway, I think, to be a catcher. Got hit with a couple foul balls to the head and didn't really think anything of it. I uh, felt a little foggy, couldn't eat. The anger came really quick. When I'd go to swing, the ball would kind of disappear. My wife said, if, if you don't tell the doctors, I'm going to. They sent me to UPMC. He looked at me and said, you got a pretty good concussion gave me a plan, like a rehab for your brain, just to come from that to catch the last out of the series. I didn't choose to get those concussions, but I did choose UPMC. Welcome back to A Day in the Life with Josh Miller. When you came here, you already established and, and you were the principals. Um, let me ask you, does someone have to take you under your wing? Uh, and show you the ropes. Were you fortunate enough? Were you fortunate enough for someone to? I mean, are you? We did that have way? some amazing coaches um, in Boston Ballet when we were both growing up. Um, you know, superstars from the Kirov Ballet. And I didn't even have to do that, but they took a liking and said, you know what? And they just—they yeah. almost opened up a world that you didn't even realize. I mean, it's like the layers of an onion. Mm -hmm. Like you had this ballet knowledge that you've been studying for 15 years already. And then you get to this place and they blow your mind by saying, actually, there's so much more to it that you're not even realizing right. it. Um, so yeah, we, di we did have a lot of help growing up and Terry really took me under his wing when I came here. Cause actually I came here as a court of ballet member and I moved up through the ranks. But um, you know, not only is it about technique and working hard, it's also having confidence and getting stage experience because that whole mental game, as you were saying, of you know getting ready to perform and feeling at your top level on this particular day, that's a whole other um, part of the, the profession that you have to get used but to. And When you watch film, again, you watch film, we all watch film in the sporting world, you, you, you try to improve, oh, I remember that, I, I slipped, mm -hmm. I felt there, I hope it wasn't noticeable, I'm looking. Did all that go on? Does that all happen on stage while you're there? You're like, oh, I, I, my, uh, I missed here. I kind of, I was a hair definitely. off. Definitely. Oh, for sure. I mean, after, after a performance, and sometimes because... You know exactly. People tell you how great you'd be like, nah, I, I know yeah. four things I know. I got to go see real quick. I want to see what... Four things would be a great show. I'll tell you that. Right, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, and because of things are happening so fast and whatever, I'm sure this is the same uh, for you a little bit, is... Uh, you know, everything happens and you're remembering things, but it's probably like, I don't know, three hours after the performance. Oh, that you recall. When you're, you, you know, know you're, yeah. and, and you're thinking, so oh, that, oh. You yeah, hang you know. out. Hey, did you, being married, I have to assume you can't fake that passion. I mean, when you really, when you guys look at each other, even walking through this, you both have a switch you hit. You go help other people, you look like you're carrying, you've got to catch somebody. <laughs> and, and you're doing your thing, kind of okay, but then when you go through it, you both just have a switch and you have like your stage faces. And I don't even know if you mean to do it, but you actually just, you just as if you're in costume and you're rolling. And, but being married, uh, the energy that you give to one another, it's, it's so obvious and unbelievable. I think being married, that has to be something that you can't fake. Well, I think both of us too really like a rehearsal process that involves all aspects of the performance. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe for some people, they can not, live their characters so much in rehearsal and save it for the stage, but I think that both of us find that it's 
more part of our everyday that we try to you know, bring those characters to each rehearsal and let that grow and expand. And I mean, in a way, too, that references uh, the last question we were talking about, is if, if you can try to make your rehearsal... As much like your performance yeah. as possible. Then, yeah. then when you switch over... Switch over, it's not a big deal. Right, but if you, if you, if you, you know, do sort of, you do all the hard stuff, but then for the small things that are easy, you, nah, blah, 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 blah. Then when you get on stage and you need to keep that, it just changes things. It's yeah. a different feeling, and uh, I, I think both of us prefer to... And we've learned that through our experience. Probably. Oh, for sure. And people telling you, don't do that, <laughs> no, no, don't do that. <laughs> I'm sure when you hear somebody not playing a game because of a turf toe, mm. or if they have a jammed finger and they don't want to play, or they're only 80%, they're not going to play that day. I mean, you guys, people pay money to see you play. You guys are the top tops. How much pain? I mean, you just have to leave that at the door, too. I mean, that's, you have a team doctor, right? We had Vonda write in and we talked to her earlier. I mean, you guys are, the pain you guys play with, she was telling me, it's just, I say play with, perform with, is just unbelievable. Sometimes, the show must yeah. Go on. yeah. Well, and it's also, our dancers' careers are short, and if you want to do these works and these pieces, you don't get that many opportunities to do it. So I'm not saying that we do unhealthy things and, you know, dance on terrible but injuries but sometimes you, as you get older you, you have, have to, push to. Through. but it's amazing that you two have the um, wherewithal to realize what you're doing is an art you're good at it and you can also have fun um, uh, people really just get into a little a little magnifying glass and they, they don't allow themselves to enjoy it in life mm -hmm. they don't actually enjoy the moment that they're doing it it's like when they look back they say I wish I enjoyed it more it seems like you guys have really figured out a way to do it all which I'm sure doesn't happen overnight either it's, um, it's one thing about dance that I love is like when you're on stage, time almost slows down mm -hmm. and because you have to focus only on that. Your mind is completely consumed by what you're doing at that moment and I don't think too many professions have no. that. And nor could you get flowers thrown at you, <laughs> take a bow, come back to the encore and then say, I still hate you. Well, Alexandra Christopher, thank you so much for your time. The Pittsburgh uh, Ballet is in such good hands. So oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, Pittsburgh, if you're not convinced they're the best athletes in town, I don't know what else I can tell you. I'm telling you they are. I've seen it firsthand. I want to thank the good people here at the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater for letting us hang out with them. An exciting day for all. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for future episodes of A Day in the Life.